Hello, good day, grade 6. Welcome to our e-learning for this week, week 1 from March 22 to 26, 2020. I am Mr. Johnson. I hope you are safe. Now for today, Sunday, we're going to start our first lesson for our di distance learning. And our lesson is Lesson 17, The Emperor's Silent Army. Now I want you to pause this video to prepare the following materials. So I want you to bring your uh, journey's book and I want you to go to this YouTube link um, Socrative class dojo and of course your reading notebook so prepare everything that we've been using before in our classroom so if you are prepared let's continue so there are three things to do for this week number one I want you to finish watching this video if you're watching this video right now you are on the right track next number two I want you to download and answer the attached activity in this class uh, in the class dojo. So I attach an activity there, uh, a word document that you can actually answer. So this is optional. So after you downloaded it, you can answer it. You you practice uh, this uh, activity to prepare for the quiz. So there will be a quiz every Wednesday. It will be in Socrative. There will be an app. I'll be explaining it later to you. So if you want, you can answer the file. And you can send this back, this file with your name on it, into my email, uh, johnsontordeal.americanacademy at gmail.com. You, uh, you can send also your pictures, your videos that you are doing this activity. Again, sending it back to me is actually optional, but I will be very glad if you send me back some evidence that you are learning at home, hopefully. And finally, number three, this is uh, a required activity. You're going to uh, Socrative, and you're going to download this app in your lap in your laptop or in your in your uh, cell phones. So after after downloading this and installing it, um, you can actually answer some activities there. So you can open up the so Socrative app, and you're going to type A A S Grade Six, all capital all capital word uh, letters capitalized in the room name. So there will be a room name in the Socrative, and you're going to type this in. And you will be waiting for the activity and it will be launched on Wednesday. So every Wednesday, English activity. So you're going to answer the quiz or activity on this day. And maybe from 8 to 1 um, p.m. So again, remember, YouTube, Class Dojo file, and then Socrative. So if you understand that, you can continue. If you don't understand it, again, you can pause this video and then read all these details in front of you right now so let's continue our topic for week one uh, uh um the following is the following vocabulary and reading so you're going to uh, learn about vocabulary today and reading so today sunday you're going to study vocabulary words and read the story and on wednesday you're going to answer the practice activity and the socrative quiz next these are our learning objectives for today you're going to acquire and use vocabulary. You're going to refer use of vocabulary from digital and printed resources. Next, you're going to read on level with purpose and understanding. And finally, you're going to read fluently and accurately. So these are our goals for today's lesson. Next, so these are the vocabulary words. You can find these vocabulary words in Journey's page 488 to 489 so you can get your book right now open it up and open 488 to 489 so you can actually read after me so number one archaeologist archaeologist number two replicas replicas number three lustrous lustrous number four elaborate Elaborate. Number five, excavate. Excavate. Number six, distinct. Distinct. Number seven, dignify. Dignify. Number eight, mythical. Mythical. Number nine, temperaments. Temperaments. And number ten, proceed. Proceed. So these are our ten vocabulary words for today's lesson. So let's continue. So, I want you to watch this audiobook presentation for, uh, for today, 
And while you're watching, I want you to listen carefully, read accurately, and finally, I want you to pra practice thoroughly. So you're going to, if you don't understand a thing or maybe a word in the audio book, you can repeat it. Make the video slower. So I think you know that. So we can start the video right now, this audio book. So I'm going to click this in 3, 2, 1. Lesson 17. Language Detective. Talk about the writer's words. Adjectives are words that describe a noun or a pronoun. Work with a partner. Find the five blue vocabulary words that are used as adjectives. What are your clues? Use the adjectives in new sentences. Vocabulary and context. 1. Archaeologists. Archaeologists are scientists who study items left behind by cultures from the past. 2. Replicas. Replicas, or copies, have been made of ancient Chinese pottery and statues. 3. Lustrous. Chinese royalty wore lustrous silk robes. The material seemed to shine or gleam. 4. Elaborate. The Great Wall of China was an elaborate building project. It involved a great deal of careful detail. Study each context card. Use a dictionary to confirm the meanings of these words. 5. Excavate. To learn about ancient China, men and women excavate artifacts that have been buried for centuries. 6. Distinct. The Chinese writing system has hundreds of distinct or different characters. 7. Dignified. Members of the emperor's court acted in a manner that was dignified or worthy of honor. 8. Mythical. The Chinese dragon is a mythical creature, one that exists only in the imagination. 9. Temperaments. According to Chinese astrology, People born in certain years have similar temperaments or personalities. 10. Precede. A horseman might precede or go ahead of the emperor during his travels. So now we have our activities. So we've been doing this uh, a lot of times in the classroom. So before we, uh, we start any lesson, we always have activities in, in the vocabulary and in the reading so for today for the vocabulary part you're going to do the following so letter a so find the context clues and letter b will be using this context clue uh context clue or this vocabulary words uh, rather in a sentence so right now we are in letter a so find the context clues so as you can see in the in your book in page 400 uh, 488 you can see here the archaeolo archaeologist and number two replicas so what are you going to do is that you're going to read the sentences and find the context clues. So let me give you an example. So in number one, you can see here archaeologists. So archaeologists are scientists who study items left behind by cultures from the past. So you can see some words here in the sentence that will give us hints, tips, or clues about the meaning, giving us the meaning of the word archaeologist and you can actually learn or study from the picture below so you can see here these are scientists these are people who study the cultures from the past so you can see right now from the picture and from the words in the sentences these are these words and this picture is actually giving us a hint or a tip or a clue about the meaning of the word of the uh, the word archaeologist next replicas or copies have been made of Asian Chinese pottery and statues so here a wooden horse and this is actually a copy or a replica so this picture and this word will give us the meaning of the word replicas so I think you know the answer now so you can see here the context clues for number one and two archaeologists these are scientists so if you hear the word scientists you know that these are people who are studying and this scientist are people studying about the cultures of the past so that's it this this is the meaning of the word and number two we have replicas it's obviously here replicas or copies so uh, I told you before the word or means if you see the word or it means this is uh, somewhat like giving us 
uh, inspiration or giving us uh, the, the other ID, other word for the word replicas, so copies. So right now, that's how to find context clues. So for your activity uh, at home, you're going to find you're going to find the other context clues. All right, you're going to find other context clues from uh, number three to number ten because we are done with number one and number two. All right, so if you are done with this activity, we can uh, we, I can give you actually some tricks and tips in answering this activity. It's actually easy at home if you have an internet connection or you have a book. So number one. If you have a book or you have the dictionary, you can use a dictionary or the glossary. So open up your journey's book, go to the last four to five pages, and you can find a list of vocabulary words and the meaning of the words there, actually. And we call that glossary. So found at the end of your book. So you need a dictionary. You can find a dictionary. Or if you don't have a dictionary at home, you can actually use your internet browser. It can be Google or Safari. So here, you can click Google, and then you type the word there, and then you, it can actually give you the meaning. It can give you a lot of examples, a lot of sentences with the word in it. So here, I can show you an example. So um, this, is a, this is a link, www.dictionary.com slash browse slash Google. So I'm going to click it right now, and I can show you an example of this, what I'm talking about. So I'm clicking it. So it will open up for you. So here you can type at the top the word that you're uh, that you're looking for, like so, like replicas. All right. So this is it right now. There's the meaning here, number one and number two. You can actually learn how to pronounce it properly also by clicking this um, icon here. Replica. All right. That's it. So let's, clo uh, let's uh, close this up, and that's it. We can continue to letter B. For letter B, we have use each vocabulary word in a sentence. So you're going to write each vocabulary in a sentence. You know this. We've been doing this before in our class. All right. So for example, here um, I use archaeologists in a sentence. So people who study about the cultures of the past are called archaeologists. So it's actually easy if you know the meaning of the word. Next, the same word again that I said, replicas. There are many replicas of ancient bases in the new museum. So here, I made use of the word replica in a sentence. Replicas in a sentence. So as you can see right now, number one and number two, they are answered. You can answer it actually on your own right now. So here, where, where do you answer? Where can you answer? All right. So I have a practice activity ready for you. You can download it and, and in your Class Dojo account or from your from the class story of your parents. All right. So here, uh, this is the sample of the attached file. So you're going to open up your file, and you can find this file actually there. So th here it is. I'm going to show you. So this is the activity. You can type your name here if you want to send it back to me, or you can print it and answer at home and someone will take your picture and then send it back to me in my email all right so here you can find this question um question this is, should be question number one um write the definition and use the vocabulary word in a sentence see here you can write the context clue in the first line and the definition of the word and in the second line you can write um a sentence using that vocabulary so it's actually one two ten and there will be other Examples here, you can answer it. This is a practice. It's better for you to practice before uh, taking the quiz on Wednesday. So I'm giving you a practice paper here. It's so important, all right? And also, that's it. Next, let's save that. All right, so we're done with the vocabulary activity. And you can start answering right now. You can pause this video, start answering. Then you can continue this video. All right, let's continue our lesson. So we are now in the reading time. So I want you to get your book. All right. And then I want you to open it up and read page, uh, pages 492 to 505. If you are a good reader, a fast reader, and you can do it on your own independently, that's great. All right. You can, uh, you can pause this video right now and read on your own right now. However, um, if 
if you have a, of, if you're struggling in reading this a very long text you can watch the audio book i prepared for you so now as you read look for the main problem the setting the characters and the plot so we've been doing this a hundred times in our class before looking for the the main problem the setting characters and plot you know what to do and again you're going to answer the question in the activity paper so once you're done reading you are going to open up your paper the downloaded part and then go to page um let's see page five maybe or page yeah it's in page four here reading literature comprehension you can start answering this if you want to answer and send it back to me if you this is your answer you can highlight it all right if this is your answer in number two you can highlight it all right so that's it and you can there's a lot of questions here that you need to practice answering and this is the most important part question number two you're going to write everything here and i'm not going to see you answering this but it's so important for you to to answer this because some of the questions here in this paper in this practice activity uh, let's say 60 percent of the questions here will be repeated in your quiz so it will be very very great if you practice this like think that think that this paper is actually what we call a revision paper for the quiz on wednesday all right so the quiz will be about 20 to 30 uh, points and um, some of the questions will be from here in this paper so i think you know what to do all right let's let's close it up all right so for students who who, who need students who need some uh, some help in the in the reading i prepared here an audiobook for you so it will be an audiobook you can you can follow it so you can read with the audiobook i'm going to click this picture right now and it will go directly to the audiobook so you can follow the instructions over there you can pause the video if you don't understand a word you can go to google again type the word and it will give you the meaning all right so you can go page by page be patient you can you can do this study this alone independently you can do it all right so that's it let's start lesson 17 anchor text genre informational text gives facts and other information about a topic as you read look for headings that begin sections of related information photographs illustrations and captions facts about a subject or topic Meet the author, Jane O'Connor. Jane O'Connor is the author of more than 30 books for all age groups. Writing runs in O'Connor's family. Her younger son, Tim, is an author. She has collaborated with her husband, Jim, The Magic Top Mystery, Slime Time, and when her older son, Robert, was in sixth grade, the two of them wrote the book Super Cluck about a chicken from outer space. O'Connor's nonfiction includes books on art, movies, special effects, and the White House. The Emperor's Silent Army, Terracotta Warriors of Ancient China, by Jane O'Connor. Essential question. How can people use clues to learn about ancient cultures? A Strange Discovery, Lintong County, People's Republic of China, March 1974. It's just an ordinary day in early spring, or so three farmers think, as they trudge across a field in northern China. They are looking for a good place to dig a well. There has been a drought, and they must find water or risk losing their crops later in the year. The farmers choose a spot near a grove of persimmon trees. Down they dig, five feet, ten feet, still no water. They decide to keep on digging a little deeper. All of a sudden, one of the farmers feels his shovel strike against something hard. Is it a rock? It's difficult to see at the bottom of the dark hole, so the farmer kneels down for a closer look. No, it isn't a rock. It seems to be clay, and not raw clay, but clay that has been baked and made into something. But what? Now, more carefully, the men dig around the something. Perhaps it is a pot. Or a vase. However, what slowly reveals itself is the pottery head of a man who stares back at them, open-eyed and amazingly real-looking. The farmers have never seen anything like it before, 
but they do remember stories that some of the old people in their village have told, stories of a pottery man found many years ago not far from where they are now. The villagers had been scared that the pottery man would bring bad luck, so they broke it to bits, which were then reburied and forgotten. The terracotta figures were discovered in the countryside of northern China. Analyze the text. Figurative language. Find an example of hyperbole on page 495. Why would the author use this type of figurative language here? What does it mean? The three well diggers are not so superstitious. They report their discovery to a local official. Soon, a group of archaeologists arrive to search the area more closely. Maybe they will find pieces of a clay body to go with the clay head. In fact, they find much more. During the weeks and months that follow, the archaeologists dig out more pottery men, which now are called by a more dignified term, terracotta figurines. The figurines are soldiers, that much is clear. But they come from a time long ago, when Chinese warriors wore knee-length robes, armor made from small iron fish scales, and elaborate top-knot hairdos. All of the soldiers are life-size or a little bigger, and weigh as much as 400 pounds. They stand at attention, as if waiting for the command to charge into battle. The only thing missing is their weapons, and those are found too. Hundreds of real bronze swords, daggers, and battle axes, as well as thousands of scattered arrowheads, all so perfectly made that, after cleaning, their ancient tips are still sharp enough to split a hair. Today, after nearly 30 years of work, terracotta soldiers are still being uncovered and restored. What the well diggers stumbled upon purely by accident has turned out to be among the largest and most incredible archaeological discoveries of modern times. Along with the great pyramids in Egypt, the buried army is now considered one of the true wonders of the ancient world. Spread out over several acres near the city of Xi'an, the soldiers number not in the tens or hundreds, but in the thousands, probably 7,500 total. Until 1974, nobody knew that right below the people of northern China, an enormous underground army had been standing guard, silently and watchfully, for more than 2,200 years. Who put them there? One man, known as the fierce tiger of Qin, the divine son of heaven. He was the first emperor of China. Although more than 7,000 strong, the terracotta army is small compared to the emperor's real army. The Quest for Immortality Before the time of Qin Shi Huang, who lived from 259 to 210 BCE, there was no China. Instead, there were seven separate kingdoms, each with its own language, currency, and ruler. For hundreds of years, they had been fighting one another. The kingdom of Chen was the fiercest. Soldiers received their pay only after they had presented their generals with the cut-off heads of enemy warriors. By 221 BCE, the ruler of the Chen kingdom had eaten up his neighbors like a silkworm devouring a leaf, according to an ancient historian. The name China comes from Chen. The king of Chen now ruled over an immense empire, around one million square miles, that stretched north and west to the Gobi Desert, south to present-day Vietnam, and east to the Yellow Sea. To the people of the time, this was the entire civilized world. Not for another hundred years would the Chinese know that empires existed beyond their boundaries. To the ruler of Chen, being called king was no longer grand enough. He wanted a title that no one else had ever had before. What he chose was Chen Shi Huang. This means first emperor, God in heaven, and almighty of the universe, all rolled into one. No paintings exist of the emperor done in his lifetime, so there is no way to know how faithful this portrait is. But no title, however superhuman it sounded, could protect him from what he feared most, dying. More than anything, the emperor wanted to live forever. According to legend, a magic elixir had granted eternal life to the people of the mythical eastern islands. 
Over the years, the Emperor sent expeditions out to sea in search of the islands and the magic potion, but each time they came back empty-handed. If he couldn't live forever, then Chen Shi Huang was determined to live as long as possible. He ate powdered jade and drank mercury in the belief that they would prolong his life. In fact, these medicines were poison and may have caused the Emperor to fall sick and die while on a tour of the easternmost outposts of his empire. He was 49 years old. If word of Chen Shi Huang's death got out while he was away from the capital, there might be a revolt, so his ministers kept the news a secret. With the emperor's body inside his chariot, the entire party traveled back to the capital city. Meals were brought into the emperor's chariot. Daily reports on affairs were delivered as usual, all to keep up the appearance that the emperor was alive and well. However, it was summer, and a terrible smell began to come from the chariot. But the clever ministers found a way to account for the stench. A cart was loaded with smelly salted fish and made to precede the chariot, overpowering and masking any foul odors coming from the dead emperor. And so, Chen Shi Huang returned to the capital for burial. The tomb of Chen Shi Huang had been under construction for more than thirty years. It was begun when he was a young boy of thirteen, and was still not finished when he died. Even incomplete, the emperor's tomb was enormous, larger than his largest palace. According to legend, it had a domed ceiling inlaid with clusters of pearls to represent the sun, moon, and stars. Below was a gigantic relief map of the world, made from bronze. Bronze hills and mountains rose up from the floor, with rivers of mercury flowing into a mercury sea. Along the banks of the rivers were models of the emperor's palaces and cities, all exact replicas of the real ones. In ancient times, the Chinese believed that life after death was not so very different from life on earth. The soul of a dead person could continue to enjoy all the pleasures of everyday life. So people who were rich enough constructed elaborate underground tombs filled with silk robes, jewelry with precious stones, furniture, games, boats, chariots, everything the dead person could possibly need or want. Chen Shi Huang knew that grave robbers would try their best to loot the treasures in the tomb. So he had machines put inside the tomb that produced the rumble of thunder to scare off intruders, and mechanical crossbows at the entrance were set to fire arrows automatically should anyone dare trespass. The emperor also made certain that the workers who carried his coffin to its final resting place never revealed its exact whereabouts. As the men worked their way back through the tunnels to the tomb's entrance, a stone door came crashing down, and they were left to die, sealed inside the tomb along with the body of the emperor. Even all these measures, however, were not enough to satisfy the emperor. And so, less than a mile from the tomb, in underground trenches, the terracotta warriors were stationed. Just as flesh-and-blood troops had protected him during his lifetime, the terracotta troops were there to protect their ruler against any enemy for all eternity. The Faces of Ancient China About two thousand soldiers have been unearthed, yet amazingly, so far, no two are the same. The army includes men of all different ages, from different parts of China, with different temperaments. A young soldier looks both excited and nervous. An older officer, perhaps a veteran of many wars, appears tired, resigned. Some soldiers seem lost in thought, possibly dreaming of their return home. Others look proud and confident. Although from a distance the figures appear almost identical, like giant-sized toy soldiers, each is a distinct work of art. Did real-life models pose for the figures? Probably not, but hundreds of craftsmen from all over the empire spent more than ten years in workshops set up near the pits creating the warriors. It is likely that they made the faces of the soldiers look like the faces of people that they knew from home. The uniforms of the terracotta figures are exact copies in clay of what real soldiers of the day wore. The soldier's uniform tells his rank in the army. The lowest-ranking soldiers are bareheaded and wear heavy knee-length tunics but no armor. Often their legs are wrapped in cloth shin guards for protection. The general's uniforms are the most elegant. Their caps sometimes sport a pheasant feather 
Their fancy shoes curl up at the toes, and their fine armor is made from small iron fish scales. Tassels on their armor are also a mark of their high rank. The terracotta soldiers are now the ghostly grayish color of baked clay, clay that came from nearby Mount Lee. Originally the soldiers were all brightly colored. Tiny bits of paint can still be seen on many of the figures and are proof that uniforms came in a blaze of colors, purple, blue, green, yellow, red, and orange. The colors of each soldier's uniform indicated not only which part of the army he belonged to, cavalry or infantry, for example, but also what his particular rank was. The terracotta horses were fully painted, too, in brown with pink ears, nostrils, and mouths. Unfortunately, when figures are dug out of the ground, most of the paint on them peels off and sticks to the surrounding earth. Also, when exposed to air, the paint tends to crumble into dust. The colored computer image shows how the general would have looked originally. Today, groups of artisans and workshops near the three pits make replicas of the soldiers, following the techniques used 2,200 years ago. Their work helps archaeologists learn more about how the original figures were created. Even though the workers today have the advantages of modern kilns that register temperatures exactly, no copies have ever come out as hard or as lustrous as the ancient originals. The workers of today are also not under the same kind of pressure as the emperor's potters. If they made a mistake, they were killed. Who were the potters who made the original soldiers? For the most part, they have remained anonymous. In ancient times, being a craftsman was considered lowly work. However, some soldiers are signed, probably by the master potter in charge of a workshop. The signature is like a stamp of approval, a sign of quality control. Of course, the creators of the terracotta warriors never intended their work to be seen by anyone other than the emperor. That is a strange notion for 21st century minds to accept. Artists today want their work to be seen, enjoyed, admired. But as soon as the emperor's army was completed, it was buried. Pits were dug twenty feet deep. Green tiled floors were laid down. Dirt walls were constructed, creating tunnels in which the soldiers and horses and chariots were placed. A wooden roof was built overhead, and then ten feet of dirt was shoveled on top of the army. It was supposed to remain undisturbed for all eternity, but it did not turn out that way. How surprised the tin sculptors would be by the crowds of people from all over the world who come to see their creations. Inside the Emperor's Tomb What exactly is the terracotta army guarding so steadfastly? What besides the body of the dead emperor is inside the tomb? The answer is that nobody knows, and the government of China has no plans to excavate and find out. In ancient China, it was the custom to build a natural-looking hill on top of a person's tomb. The more important a person was, the bigger the hill. Thousands of years of harsh weather have worn down the emperor's mound. Originally, it was 400 feet high, almost as high as the biggest of the three great pyramids in Egypt. Like the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Chinese believed that the body of a dead person should be preserved as a home for the soul. However, the Chinese did not make a person's body into a mummy. They believed that Jade had magic powers, among them the ability to keep a dead body from decaying. In Chinese tombs from the first century BCE, bodies of noblemen and princesses have been found wearing entire suits of Jade. It is believed that Qin Shi Huang is buried in just such a suit, the thousands of small tiles all beautifully carved and sewn together with gold thread. And over this jade burial outfit, his body is supposedly covered in a blanket of pearls. As for all the things placed with the emperor, certainly they must be grand beyond imagining. Silk robes embroidered with dragons, gem-encrusted crowns and jewelry, musical instruments, hand-carved furniture, lamps, beautiful dishes, cooking pots, and golden utensils. Like the pharaohs of ancient Egypt, the first emperor would have made certain that he had everything he might possibly want in the afterlife. But unless his tomb is excavated, what these treasures look like will remain a mystery. The body of the emperor, which has never been recovered, 
may wear a jade funeral suit like this one found in the tomb of a Chinese princess from the late 2nd century. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the audiobook. Now, little reminders only. Before we, um, we stop the lesson for today, before we end our lesson, I want to remind you that you need to follow four things for this week. Number one, I want you to finish the context clue vocabulary activity. I want you to finish uh, using each vocabulary word in a sentence. Number three, I want you to finish reading the story on your own or with the help of the audiobook that you just watched. And you're going to answer the questions in the practice activity. Uh, the one that we're talking about, it's in the class dojo. You can download it and then you can answer it. And uh, finally, on Wednesday, March 25, 2020, you're going to answer the Socrative quiz from 8 to 1 p.m. Uh, please make sure that you're going to uh, answer it only from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, this is so important because for, uh, before 1, I mean uh, after 1, I'm going to, clo um, I'm going to, clo to close the, the activity and you cannot enter uh, anything. So it's so important that you can do it, you should do it this as early as possible. So from 8 to 1, alright? You can do it from 10, you can do it from 12, but it will take you time. It will take you about 20 minutes in answering it. All right, so you need to, to be prepared. So that's our reminders for today. Thanks for watching. I'll be waiting for your Socrative uh, quiz results on Wednesday. Again, this is Mr. Johnson. I hope you are okay. Be fine. Be careful. Thank you and God bless.